Hello, I am Han Aram. Welcome to AlyssonPhysics.com. In this video, I will talk about the Doppler shift. Doppler shift is a phenomenon seen in both sound waves and electromagnetic waves. Here, only the Doppler shift in electromagnetic waves will be explained. Alice law establishes a direct relationship via its own C plus V C minus V mathematics with the Doppler shift mathematics and reveals all its features which is currently used in physics. Therefore, we will see all the details of why, how, and where the Doppler shift in electromagnetic waves occur. We will find the answers to these questions. Also, the Doppler shift is a topic in the science of physics for about 150 years, maybe even more. After all, it has a certain math. While we are dealing with this subject here, we will also see the reasoning of this math and these equations. Wavelength changes in this way. The frequency changes in this way. Let's get into the subject now. Let's have one transmitter. Like this. A transmitter broadcasting at a constant frequency and constant wavelength. When we turn on this transmitter, it produces such a sound. Of course, we send this sound as an electromagnetic wave, not as a sound wave. Like this, let's do it again. We send the signal from a signal tower like this. Where do we send? We have a receiver here. There is distance of D1 between the signal tower and our receiver. Since the signal is uniform and monotonous, I can show the signal with a uniform sinus wave like this. Here the signal goes and arrives. Now, let's number it, because this is uniform sinus wave. These are the wavelengths. If we give a number to each wavelength, here is the moment of the broadcasting of the signals, from here the signal goes and arrives. Here, at the point of arrival we measure the wavelength of this signal as lambda zero. Because the two objects are motionless relative to each other. Now this distance, how many of these wavelengths are there? The number n represents the number of these wavelengths. Here, there are 25 of them, 25 times lambda zero gives the distance here. There is also a second equation that we will use here, which you see as T0. What is this? This is the duration of this signal. Which signal? At this out, the first signal that came out. This is the time it takes for that signal to arrive here. Of course, since the speed of the incoming signal is always c relative to an object, I get the time value here when I divide the distance by c. Now of course, there is no Doppler shift here. 
because the two objects are immobile relative to each other. In order for Doppler shift to occur, two objects must be in motion relative to each other. Now let's see it. Now, there is a similar situation here. We have a signal transmitter here again. Of course, the signal transmitter is on the plane this time. We put the device on the plane, and we broadcast from there. Like this. Let's do this again. Note that the signals are drawing an arc like this. So don't be surprised. Because the signal coming from there, it goes like this, and the coming signal is going like this, this going signal from here is going like this, that broadcast signal from here is going like this. When we line up these, we get a curve like this. Naturally. Now let's see this in details. Here's our plane. Our plane goes from point B to point C. There is D1 distance between the receiver and the plane. The first signal comes out, let's number it. Like this. When the plane reaches point C, this signal is arriving here at the same moment. Where did the plane send the 25th signal? Here. Now, the same rule is valid for distance D2. How many wavelengths it sent? We multiply the number of wavelengths by the length of wavelength. Of course, the wavelength has changed here. We will see why it has changed soon. Our T0 value is the same. In other words, the time from the moment of the signal was broadcast to the moment of its arrival is D1 divided by C. Now, a situation like this has occurred. Here we have the Doppler effect. Let's see why. Now, the same case. The plane goes from here. I'm numbering. Now, it sent 9, sent 12, 13, 15, 17, 18, 25. When it sends number 25, the signal arrived here. Now, let's see the equations. Now, if the tower had sent this signal, if the tower had sent this signal, when it sent the 25th signal, such a situation would arise, of course, because it was immobile. Here too, the receiver would measure the wavelength of the incoming signal as lambda zero. But what happened? After the plane started sending the signals at this point, it moved towards that point. And sent the 25th signal there. So what difference occurred? Look, while the situation was like this, it turned into this. Therefore, we clearly see that there is a stretch, an expansion that a change in wavelength has occurred. Now, this is a very special triangle. Because it is a triangle whose edges, all three edges, are determined by the arrival time of the signal. What was the arrival time? It was D1 divided by C. Time required for the front end of the signal to arrive here. 
D1 divided by C. Now during T0 the plane travels with the speed of U in BC direction. Like that. Now, this edge is also obvious. So what is the AC edge? To find the AC edge, we do as follows. We draw an arc, where the center is point A and radius is equal to line AB, that is, in the distance D1. Like this, this way. If we say the O is the point, where this arc intersects with the AC line, now AO and AB become equal. From there to there, and from there to there, they are equal. So, what is this? The OC line. This OC line is a measure of how far the two reference systems, that is, the receiving station and the plane, move away from each other for time interval T0. For how long? For the duration of T0. If I define the speed of two objects moving away from each other as V, the distance X becomes X equal VT0. So AC distance becomes AC equal OC plus AB. That place. The sum of this and that gives that. So this edge is also certain. Now, of course, when the signal comes from here, how does this perceive it? Lambda 1 perceives it as changed because the wavelength is elongated. Now let me show you. Don't let this convex confuse you. We could also do this, we could only define a motion on the x-axis in this way. So the distance d2, the wavelength times how many waves are sent from, I mean this and that. Here, we move the plane also on the y-axis as well, so that we could analyze the movement more clearly analyze it more comfortably. Now, we have seen that the wavelength is necessarily changing. Now we have also obtained our triangle. The name of this triangle is the Doppler triangle, a very special triangle. Now of course we see a C plus V here. But there is also C minus V, how is that happening? Now, here the direction of movement was moving away. With the distance x we add this. There. But if this happens, I have to make a subtraction here to find the AC distance. I subtract the distance x from AO. It looks like this. So if it moves into the arc, this becomes C minus V we see. That the wavelength is shrinking. Wavelength is stretching if it goes out of the arc. Like this. So, this is how we define movement. Now, we will get Doppler mathematics. Now, we created this part in the previous section. We also created this triangle. What we need to do next is to reach the result by using the equations there. Here, from here and there, we get this value. We make the necessary simplifications and arrangements. 
and obtain the mathematics of the wavelength shift. Look how easy Alice Law did this job. Here, I want to show one more thing. This will be a repetition. If the signal was sent from the tower, the signal would be received as lambda zero. However, since it was sent from the plane, in this way, the wavelength was elongated and the receiver received the signal over lambda 1. Let's show it like this. Now both reference systems are broadcasting. They are broadcasting with the same device. The frequency is the same, and they are broadcasting from the same frequency. So the number of wavelengths they send in a unit of time is the same. Now, they sent 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 dot dot at this time they are sending 12, 17, 18, 19, and 25. When they sent 25, the first signal from both reference systems arrived here. What happened now? Wavelengths differed. So, now, so the wavelength change is not related to this device. So, it's an involuntary event. A rule to which electromagnetic waves are subject. So, the wavelength is stretching in this way. This is the mathematics of the wavelength stretch. Of course, the wavelength does not always stretch, the wavelength can also shrink. We saw it too. If there is such a movement, the wavelength will eventually shrink. Let's see this too. Plane is sending, tower is sending. They sent 6, 8, 10, 12, 17, 25. Here, the wavelength is in stuck condition. It was like this. It became like this. What happened to our equation? This is C minus V. Here it is, since the equation can be both C plus V and C minus V. According to the state of the movement, we show that part with a plus minus sign. If both objects move away from each other, it gets plus value. If both objects approach each other, it gets minus value. Now there is also the frequency shift. Let's see it too. Now, this part, we already got it from the previous page. What is this? This is the wave speed equation. If you multiply the wavelength and frequency of a wave, you get the speed of the wave. Now here, both signals are coming here. So what is the speed of the signal coming to itself relative to a reference system? It is always C. Therefore, if we multiply the wavelength by perceived frequency of the wave coming to itself, that is, whichever wavelength it takes, and what frequency it takes, if we multiply each other, we get the light speed constant C. This shows that. After all that, we make the simplifications and arrangements. 
In this way, we also obtain the mathematics of frequency shift. Again, with Alice's law, we can see what frequency shift is in an extremely easy way. Let's move on. Now I want to show something else. Now, signals from both the tower and the plane have arrived here. Let the receiver continue to receive the signals. Look, I am numbering. When it receives the 25th signal coming from the tower, there are wavelengths that have not been received yet coming from the plane. So what happened? It received a different number of wavelengths per unit time from both sources. It took more wavelengths from there. It took less wavelengths from there. What is the result of this? Frequency shift. The number of wavelengths received per second will give us the frequency. So here, it receives this signal in this way. It also receives the signal from the tower over lambda zero wavelength and F zero frequency. So, if it is still relative to each other, there is no change in wavelength and frequency. But, we see that, if I broadcast from here with such a device, both the wavelength and frequency here are changing. Now we have come to an important page, relativistic Doppler shift, relativistic Doppler effect. Now, I cited from Wikipedia, because it is an open source. You can go to the same page and read it there. After all, the relativistic Doppler effect is in order to add the effects of the special relativity theory to the Doppler shift, that is, to include both two physicists named Feynman and Morin, who are very valuable physicists, have sat down and conducted a desk study. They devised a formulation that says this job should be like this, relative to this special relativity theory. And they named it relativistic Doppler shift effect. Unfortunately, since special relativity theory is not a correct theory, special relativity theory mislead Feynman and Morin. As a result, things that were wrong and should not have been produced. Relativistic Doppler effect is a misconception. It is something that does not exist. It is nothing short of the wrong consequences of a wrong theory. If you want your studies to be transferred to the next generations, keep yourself away from the relativistic Doppler effect. So, there is no such thing. Here, in Alice's law, except that I described here, in any way, there is no another Doppler shift. Now, we know our triangle. There is a plane going from point B to point C. Now I wanted to show this here. OK, we send the signal as an electromagnetic wave. Here too, we receive the incoming signal as an electromagnetic wave, and in the end we listen to an effect. 
Let's see how do we listen to this effect. Now, here, it sent such a signal. How it got this signal? That is moving away. In this way, it will get low pitched. So, what would happen if it approached? It sent the signal like this. It would get a sharper and more energetic signal if it approached. Well, now, the signal is getting high here. And here, it becomes weak and getting low pitched. So there is a point in between. There is a point in between, that is, a point without the Doppler effect. Yes, there is. Well, let's find this point. Now if you remember, we drew an arc which its center is A. Like this. The arc and the AC line intersected at the O point. Now if I carry this on this arc. I carry this on this arc. Then Doppler shift does not occur. So if the movement is like this, see that it sends the signal. When the signal arrives here, if it is still on the arc, Doppler shift does not occur. Here, the speed of the plane doesn't matter. It can be at any speed. So let me move it very slowly. Like this. Look. There is no change in signal or wavelength. It could be like that. It could be very fast. Like this. And there is no change in wavelength. Relative to what? We make the graph relative to the time of arrival of this signal. Let's pay attention to this. Now this Doppler triangle is really a triangle to consider. We can also see the speed of the plane here. The ratio of distance BC to distance AB gives us the speed of the plane in terms of light speed. Light speed. Of course, we prepare a graphic to fit the screen. So that all the details of the Doppler shift are visible. Of course, the plane does not move at a speed of 0.4 C. In other words, the movement of the plane is in almost zero position. Even this speed is incredibly high. However, we have shown it in this way, so that we can see the details. The fact that the speed is less or more does not ultimately change the Doppler shift equations. So we came to the end of our topic. I think that Alice Law showed you in detail why, how, and where the Doppler shift occurred. We also saw why these equations are formed like this. The Doppler shift was brought to the world of science in 1842 by Christian Andreas Doppler. Today it is 2020. About 200 years, 180 years later. With the Alice Law, the Doppler shift is making another big breakthrough. Because it is really important for physics to show these equations in this way. Because the physics world has gained C plus V C minus V mathematics. 
You can understand from the existence of the following expressions that Doppler shift is directly related to C plus V C minus V mathematics of the Alice law. Actually, I have a lot of things to tell about Doppler topic. But let's leave this to the next videos. I just want to say that a great union has taken place. Doppler shift and Alice law are hand in glove. They are connected with such strong bonds that it is possible to say that Doppler shift is actually the experimental proof of Alice law, it is that simple. But other than that, that very special experiment that I have said will definitely be made. In other words, the speed of an outgoing signal to a moving object will be measured. I thank Christian Andreas Doppler in your presence. Regards and reverence to see you in another video. Saygılar, hürmetler.